Damn YouTube, back at it again with another TNA 2009 video. It is the next week, it is week 4 of November for the Impact. So let's go ahead and get into these incidents. Uh, while I'm doing this, sorry about last episode. I know the audio was a little low for those using speakers. I think the headphone users were fine. Raven turned up so high on soft drugs that he had to be sent home and was in no condition to work. Fire. Well, Raven was happy. Kip James was happy. That That's how we're doing it. We're, we're stone cold with that. You do drugs, you drink, you get sent home. Guess what? You're fired. I don't deal with it. I'm not dealing with it. Plus, he was on paper appearance anyway. So, Matt Morgan and Abyss have really bonded backstage, having discovered the shared love of deep sea diving. All right. Like I said, though, guys, sorry about last episode uh, with the audio issues. Hopefully, this episode is fixed. I think it's just because my mouse scrolled right before I clicked the render button on Vegas, and it lowered the uh, the audio levels of the audio track. So hopefully, it's fixed in this episode. So I'll make a cut right here after we get done booking, so we can run the show. All right, we're back, and let's go ahead and run the show. We kick things off here this week with a video package showing what happened last week at the end of the night, where Desmond Wolf defeated AJ Styles after the Hooded Attacker distracted AJ Styles. Following that, we found out that the Hooded Attacker revealed himself to be none other than Mr. Anderson making his TNA debut. So just a little video to hype that up. Uh, basically the intro, I guess. Then we go into a match right off the bat, The Amazing Red versus the debuting Sean Spears, also known as Ty Dillinger nowadays. And I just really, I signed uh, Sean Spears because I love Dillinger in real life, and his stats in the game at this time period are actually really good. And I have some ideas for him, and he had a performance of 45, and he got an average rating for his gimmick. That didn't do terrible. So that's good. A 50 D plus. I mean, compared to Red and Homicide doing what I thought, what was it? A fucking 72 B minus. It's got some room to improve, but it's all right. Let's go on to the next segment here. Ah, oh, I called in the ring. That's why. Okay. We go backstage where Christy Hemi is interviewing the Kings of Wrestling. Hero is basically the mouthpiece where he's saying that tonight you're going to see Sarah Del Rey defend that title. Oh, excuse me. She's not defending the title. I botched just there. Uh, fucking heroes like uh, Del Rey is going to go out there and show why she is the knockout champion, why she will be the forever knockout champion. And tonight, the Kings make their debut. Tonight, the Kings reign supreme as we face the Motor City Machine Guns. And we're going to show beer money who the future tag champions are. And that pretty much does that. Then we go out right into Sarah Del Rey versus Sarita in a 67C+. Like I said before... I fucking really dig the Knockouts division at this point in time when it comes to entering performances. I really feel like, uh, depending on how long this series goes for, my one of my goals is to have a main event of a pay-per-view be the Knockouts. So I feel like that can happen. Sarah Del Rey will probably will be a part of that once she gets her pop-up. She had an entering performance of 58. Sarita had an entering performance of 72. 67 C+. Plus. Uh, Sarah Del Rey obviously wins, keeping that world Knockouts champion strong. They have good pairing, and they play well off each other, which is really good. Sarah Del Rey and Sarita have pretty good chemistry, so that's good. Not much more you can ask for from that. Then we go to backstage to Dixie Carter cutting a promo saying that a new authority figure will be coming to town to run Total Nonstop Action Wrestling, and they will be here at Genesis. The Genesis of TNA is upon us, or some shit like that. I don't know. Didn't do well. Didn't expect it to do well. It's Dixie Carter. I don't really care about that segment. It was a throwaway segment. Only lasted a minute. We then go backstage to Kurt Angle with Christy Hemi. Hemi's asking Angle about what his thoughts are on tonight's rematch against Desmond Wolf. Angle basically says, tonight I'm showing that it was a fluke that he beat me. Blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden from behind, boom, Desmond Wolf comes on screen and just starts mauling Angle from behind. Starts using the set to his advantage, throwing him against the wall, etc., etc. Basically leaves Angle laying and basically out to the point where he's going to need assistance, and Desmond smiles, standing over Angle, kicks him in the head, and says, see you tonight, buddy. And that pretty much ends that segment. Got a 78. That's good. We then go to Scott Steiner versus Hernandez, where Scott Steiner defeats Hernandez with a Steiner recliner. Not really much you can say from that. Instead of 63. We had Steiner basically... Lashley comes out basically to steal back his wife as Scott Steiner stole Crystal last week. But... Scott Steiner uses a chair and basically takes out Bobby Lashley. Count how many times I said basically in this episode, because I just thought about it, and I've said it so much so far. Apologies for that. I did a 70C+, plus. can't really ask for more. 
Uh, then we go to the Kings of Wrestling's Impact debut against the Motor City Machine Guns. I was still kind of a little mad about how Motor City chose New Japan. So I decided to have Kings Wrestling obviously go over here with the KRS-One. And I want to look and see real quick. Saban and Shelly with that 96 in ring performance though. Jesus. They need to face beer money at this point. God damn. That's so crazy. The match suffered from a lack of psychology. All right. That's just fucking insane that we have two teams right now that are both pulling high 90, above 95 for all four competitors. Put them in the match, the same match together on pay-per-view. Oof. That's gold right there. We have to think about that for later. But for now, the Kings of Wrestling are doing good. 78, 79. They don't have that much pop. And their entertainment values are eh. So, I mean, it's understandable. 74, B-. minus. That's great. The Kings of Wrestling are here making their debuts with a victory. We then go to an area backstage where Mr. Anderson is trash talking AJ Styles and he's just saying that I showed everybody that the shocks keep coming. Next week I make my in ring debut for this company and next week I show why AJ Styles isn't the phenomenal one. I Mr. Anderson pause Pause for the love of God. Pause. Anderson is, and that ends the promo. So basically, that it just announces that Anderson is going to have his in-ring debut next week. We then go on to Jay Lethal versus Eric Young, a 72 B minus. Really good. I expected that though. Uh, Lethal still not suited to his gimmick, so I'm going to have to tweak that a little bit. Uh, basically, just something to give Eric Young momentum as the global champion. And after the match, he says that anyone in the back that wants a title shot next week, he will be here and will be defending the title. Kind of it's the same thing as ODB's, but I'm a fan of open challenges for titles. As you can see, I've done two already in the series. Well, not two already, but I'm planning on doing the second one next week. So who's going to be? Who's going to step up to the challenge and try to win the global title from Eric Young? It's not going to be Sarah Del Rey. I'll put that out there right now. Then we go backstage to see the uh, old screen that, uh, where it's split down in the middle. Have both of them walking towards the uh, stage, basically. Hyping up that the match is up next. We then go on to the co-main event. A 69? Ooh. I definitely thought that was going to do better. Probably because of the booking notes, but it's all right. Daniels basically faces Samoa Joe. And Joe chokes Daniels out with the coquina clutch. And... Basically, that's it for uh, that. I should have booked that the storyline was going to end because they're not facing Styles anymore, but it's all right. We can do that manually. After this, we have Desmond Wolf come out to the ring. He tells the, the ref to ring the bell that this match is starting now, and if Angle doesn't make a 10 count, he loses again. But as the ref gets up to, say, four, Kurt Angle slowly stumbles out from behind the curtain, holding his ribs, holding at the back of his neck. He walks down to the ring, injured, slides into the ring and says you're not going to beat me that easy kid and then charges wolf and the match begins a 69 c plus uh, it's all right i didn't expect this to do too great whoa desmond wolf had an ring performance of 91 that's great i didn't expect that to do too well because of it only being nine minutes basically i did the storytelling note for this and i wanted this to come off as angle working like he had an injury because of what happened earlier in the night and then wolf just picks apart his prey and Wolf once again defeats Kurt Angle. And then after the match, Desmond Wolf continues to kick Angle in the head, and then finally takes a step back, looks at the crowd, looks at the hard cam, while Angle's being put on a stretcher once again, and says, AJ Styles, you're next. I demand a title shot. I defeated you last week, and I'll defeat you again. I'm coming for the title. And that's how we end Impact. And we get a 72B-. minus. Okay, I'm cool with that. It increased our popularity. It's not like we decreased. We did all the match aims. Can't ask for more than that. Alright, that's pretty much all we got for this week's episode. Sorry it's coming out later than usual. Had a busy morning. Recorded it just now. I'm going to try to get the next episode recorded. Trying to get back on that schedule where I can get ahead of the game. But if not, still going to have another episode coming tomorrow. Regardless, we're doing the daily grind. And if you like the video, hit the like button. If you're new, subscribe. And just remember, it's a daily grind, so we're continuing every single day. 
what's going to happen tomorrow whenever Eric Young defends the global championship? Who's going to show up? Who's going to accept the challenge? Who knows? Stay tuned, guys. Take it.